Welcome to the class of Strategic Business Communication. I'm Azuko Kaneko, Associate Professor of Meiji University. To start off, let me introduce myself. I'm Azuko Kaneko, and I'm with Meiji, and my special field is Management Communication. I teach Strategic Business Communication, Transcultural Business Communication, Business Presentation, and Seminars. Let me introduce my area. I focus on business communication and why does it matter? And how do they contextualize business communication in business and management studies? This is a table of contents given in a textbook for American undergrad students. It covers business mindset, business ownership and entrepreneurship, leadership, organization, human resources, marketing, and finance. And business communication is closely related to almost everything, but mainly about leadership and organization. Of course, the motivation is quite closely connected with communication as well. And today, we will discuss strategic business communication. And to start off, we will discuss credibility. So, credibility, why does this matter? Communication is about sharing intentions, sharing feelings, sharing thoughts. And in most business situations, others make judgments about what you say, write, and do based on your credibility. So in order to be effective in the workplace, you should think about credibility. But when you hear credibility, possibly you may feel like it's too soft or you could be confident or not really confident, but maybe possibly feel at a loss what to do with this. Well, don't worry. Contrary to what most people believe, trust is not some soft, elusive quality that you either have or you don't. Rather, trust is a pragmatic, tangible, actionable asset that you can create. It is a key leadership competency of the new global economy. So it's learnable. That's why we are here. Today, I would like you to think about one case, choosing your mentor. There are three people, Luis, Sally, and Tom. They are like most people. They have strengths, and some weaknesses. Now, you should choose your mentor. Whom do you trust to help you succeed in your new position? Here is the description about those three people, Louis, Sally, and Tom. You can read about those people and think about who is the best person as your mentor. Now stop the recording and read it, choose your mentor and come back to this class again. I will read this for you if that helps you, but you can skip this part if you're comfortable about reading yourselves. Luis, Luis has worked at your company for one year. Everyone enjoys working with him. He's always cheerful and happy to see those around him. He consistently finds out what his colleagues need and goes out of his way to help out. Everyone thinks Luis is fun. He likes to go out for a drink after work and get everyone laughing. 
Luis is well known for being well connected within your company. One thing that every colleague says about him is that he's honest. He continues to make some rookie mistakes, however, and he has done sloppy work several times when he was up against tight deadlines. So this is Luis. The second person is Sally. Sally has worked at your company for three years. She has a reputation of being a staff performer. In fact, she's generally assigned the most important projects for that reason. Colleagues know that when she promises something, she makes it happen. A lot of colleagues think she's excessively critical of others when they fall short of her expectations. A colleague complained to one of the managers, Sally never gives me a chance to develop my skills. She just takes over the project. That's about Sunny. Now, the third person, Tom. Tom has worked at your company for four years. He consistently received excellent ratings on his quarterly performance reviews. He is intensely loyal to his team members, and he does everything he can to make sure they succeed. Recently, one of his team members lost a client because she missed several deadlines. When Tom's boss asked why they lost their client, Tom protected his teammate by saying that the client preferred the services of a competitor. So that's about Tom. Now, please choose mentor from those three people. Now, have you chosen your mentor? Whom do you trust to help you succeed in your new position? Whom did you choose? Luis, Sonny, or Tom? Actually, anybody could be chosen. And anyone could be the most popular in different groups. But here, how can we evaluate your de our decisions? And what can we do to build our own, cred own credibility? We would like to evaluate the credibility and analyze it. And how we can think about this concept, credibility. So, credibility, coming back to this, why does this matter? Credibility is your reputation for being trustworthy and the degree to which others believe or trust in you. Well, what should you do when communicating? We should operate from a position of trust or credibility. We should gain trust or credibility from colleagues, clients, customers, and other contacts in order, to, in order to get things done. However, the public increasingly views companies with less trust. And employees often do not trust their own business leaders. It's a shame, but well, that's a reality. Let's have a look at this figure. Well, Nurses are trusted. 82% of people responded that nurses are trustworthy. On the other hand, when it comes to business executives, only 16% of people responded that they are trustworthy. Isn't that low? So the public overwhelmingly views businesses as operating against the public's best interests. And most employees view their leaders and callings with skepticism. We should admit that we should start from deficit of credibility. So what can we do? Let's think about three components of credibility. Credibility has three components, competence, caring, and character. The first portion is competence. Competence is about the knowledge and skills needed to accomplish business tasks, approach business problems, and get a job done. Most people will judge your competence based on your track record of success and achievement. How do you establish competence? 
It's a kind of straightforward, but you can establish it through study, observation, and practice, and real-world business experiences. Competence comes first in the business settings, because in the workplace, people want to get things done. In that context, focusing on the action and emphasis on results are the key. So they focus on competence, and that's a kind of straightforward. And what comes next? Caring. Caring is about understanding the interests of others, cultivating a sense of community, and giving to others and showing generosity. This is very important in Japanese business context, in my opinion. Or if you are familiar with Japanese context, yes, that's something you are thinking about almost automatically. Cultivating a sense of community is a key to success in many Japanese workplaces. Understanding the interests of others means to gain credibility so that you care for the needs of others. And you should connect with others to gain trust and try to understand others' needs, wants, opinions, feelings, and aspirations. And that's very important. Also, you should, you should develop an other orientation. And the importance of a sense of community is not only about the Japanese context, but also in the US context. Effective corporate business leaders recognize the importance of sense of community and teamwork. Communicate using we and you orientation would be the key there. It engenders trust and helps you find mutually beneficial solutions. Even though you should be tactful here, giving to others and showing generosity is quite important. Companies with higher percentage of givers have higher profitability, higher productivity, higher customer satisfaction, and lower turnover. So this is something you should think about. Being a giver opens up opportunities. The third component is character. This is a must, but not the least. Character means staying true to commitments made to stakeholders. It also means adhering to high morale and ethical values. And this is central to creating trust. Why should we emphasize this? Well, let's have a look at this figure. What determines trust in individuals in the workplace? Honest comes on top. 77% of respondents answered that honesty determines trust in the workplace. Also, the business ethics, that's rated as the second. Business ethics means the commonly accepted beliefs and principles in the business community for acceptable behavior. This includes adhering to laws, safeguarding confidential or proprietary information, avoiding conflicts of interest, and misuse of company assets, refraining from accepting or providing inappropriate gifts, gratitude, and entertainment. Also, the transparency is important in corporate communication. That sounds right to obvious, possibly. Well, but we should keep reminding about this business ethics. So, trust building behaviors include extending trust, sharing information, telling it straight, providing opportunities, admitting mistakes, setting a good example by following rules. Do you think they are too obvious? Well, but why should we state that? because it's not really easy to be aware of this all the time. 
Now, what do you think? Could you remember the case? Luis, Sally, and Tom. Whom do you trust? Could you try to analyze your response using the framework we learned? That means three components of the credibility, competence, caring, and character. We can reanalyze the case, or you can apply it to the real world situation. For example, we have this question compared to individual's credibility. Think about two people, who, one whom you trust implicitly and another whom you do not trust. Ideally, these should be two people you currently work with or have worked with in the past. Compare them in the following ways, A, competence, B, caring, C, character, the openness of communication, and E, ease of communication. You can write four to five paragraphs, conclude with some general statements. So this is how we use the knowledge from the book and integrate it with the case or with your own experience. That's about it from strategic business communication today. Thank you very much for your kind attention. And I look forward to seeing you again at Meiji University. <laughs>